Hello everyone, welcome to our channel BioSkill Circle and today we are going to discuss glycolysis in detail. This is one of the very important and interesting topic. In aerobic respiration, enzyme catalyzed reactions can be grouped into three major processes. First is glycolysis, second is citric acid cycle and third is oxidative phosphorylation and in this video we are going to focus on the first step of aerobic respiration that is glycolysis right so what is glycolysis glycase means sweet and lysis means splitting so glycolysis is an oxidative process in which one mole of glucose is partially oxidized into two moles of pyruvate in a series of enzyme catalyzed reactions right so in simple words it is the breakdown of glucose to pyruvate now the second question is where does glycolysis occur so the answer is that it occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell it is anaerobic process. This means that it doesn't require molecular oxygen. No doubt that it is the first step of aerobic as well as anaerobic respiration, but it is anaerobic process. This process is also called EMP pathway. EMP means Ampton Mayhoff Parnas pathway. This is called EMP pathway because the scheme of glycolysis was given by Ampton, Mayhoff and Padnes. So here in glycolysis we will talk about all the 10 steps that are required to convert glucose to pyruvate. Right? The first half of the glycolysis requires energy investment. So this is called preparatory phase or energy investment phase. So you can see here that in the first step and third step energy is being used here. So the first half of glycolysis is called preparatory phase or energy investment phase. So you can see here that there are total 10 steps. First half means first five steps they constitute the preparatory or energy investment phase so first step is phosphorylation and you can see here that glycolysis starts with glucose so this is the first step of glycolysis this is phosphorylation phosphorylation means the process of adding phosphate group to a molecule and here this phosphate group is derived from the ATP right we use hexokinase enzyme to convert glucose to glucose 6 phosphate here phosphate group is derived from ATP and is transferred on to glucose to form glucose 6 phosphate so you can see here that the phosphate group is taken from this atp and is transferred on to the sixth carbon of the glucose molecule to form glucose 6 phosphate now the question is that what is the need of phosphorylating glucose the reason is that the cell wants to trap the glucose inside the cytoplasm it wants to keep the glucose from exiting the cell by adding this negatively charged phosphate group the cell basically keeps the glucose inside the cytoplasm because it is not capable of being transported across the cell membrane moreover by adding phosphate group glucose gets destabilized so if we compare the two structures glucose and glucose 6 phosphate glucose is more stable as compared to glucose 6 phosphate now the second step is isomerization 
so you can see here this is the second step this is isomerization and this step is reversible so with the help of enzyme phosphoglucoisomerase glucose 6-phosphate is converted into fructose 6-phosphate and this conversion is from aldolase to a ketose so you can see here that this isomerization is actually conversion of an aldolase into a ketose this step doesn't require energy right now the third step this one this is also phosphorylation fructose 6 phosphate is phosphorylated by ATP to form fructose 1 6 bisphosphate so you can see here that in fructose 6 phosphate only one phosphate group is there and in fructose 1 6 bisphosphate two phosphate groups are there so this one phosphate is derived from the ATP this irreversible reaction is catalyzed by an allosteric enzyme called phosphofructokinase and this enzyme requires magnesium ions for its activity right so now step 4 this one step 4 is cleavage by using enzyme aldolase fructose 1 6 bisphosphate is cleaved to produce two three carbon molecules one is glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and another one is dihydroxy acetone phosphate right so this is the cleavage step where this fructose 1 6 bisphosphate is cleaved to produce two three carbon molecules now step 5 this one this is isomerization now because we need glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate so dihydroxy acetone phosphate right that is also called DHAP so this is isomerized to form glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate with the help of enzyme triose phosphate isomerase so the first five steps of this pathway constitute the preparatory phase or uh, energy investment phase now let's move on to the payoff phase so step 6 to step 10 constitute the payoff phase right and you have to note here that there are two glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate molecules right one is obtained from the fructose 1 6 bisphosphate and another one is obtained from the dihydroxy acetone phosphate by isomerization right now step 6 this glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate uh, is oxidized to produce 1 3 bisphosphoglycerate and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase uses NAD plus and inorganic phosphate so this PI here means inorganic phosphate right so here you can see that NAD is reduced and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is oxidized now step 7 this one in this step high energy phosphate group is transferred from the 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate to ADP the formation of ATP is referred to as substrate level phosphorylation so this is the first substrate level phosphorylation right and here 
this is called substrate level phosphorylation because the phosphate donor or 1,3-bis phosphoglycerate is a substrate with high energy phosphoryl transfer potential, right? This step is catalyzed by enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase. Now step 8. 3 phosphoglycerate is converted into 2 phosphoglycerate with the help of enzyme phosphoglycerate mutase. Right now step number 9. Here 2 phosphoglycerate is converted into phosphoenol pyruvate and water is removed here. This step is catalyzed by enolase and enolase requires either magnesium ions or manganese ions. Now step 10 this one here phosphoenol pyruvate is converted into pyruvate right. So this last step of glycolysis is the irreversible transfer of the phosphoryl group from phosphoenol pyruvate to ADP and is catalyzed by pyruvate kinase. This pyruvate kinase requires either magnesium ions or potassium ions. So three glycolytic reactions are irreversible. You can see here this is the first one and here this is the second one and this is the third one. So these three glycolytic reactions are irreversible and these reactions are catalyzed by enzyme hexokinase, then phosphofructokinase and pyruvate kinase. The energy gain comes in the payoff phase of glycolysis. The payoff phase of glycolysis yields ATP and NADH. The energy yield from one molecule of glucose in glycolysis is 2 ATP and 2 NADH.